With us here on Market Guru and joining us today is Arvind Sethi, our Managing Director and CEO at Tata Asset Management. Mr. Sethi, thanks so much for being with us. A lot of global queues that we're tracking uh, actually at this point of time. So first, just want to get a sense from you on, on that. First of all, the Fed commentary. Nanu, feel free to jump in here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, for the first time, they've actually come out with a detailed technical plan yeah. going ahead. And that seems to be something the markets have picked up. Well, I think, um, Arun, the, I think the larger conversation is that we, have, we, we all know there is going to be a rate hike. We can't shy away from that. But how much of a worry is that actually going to be? Or if this, if this signal well enough, is that good enough for the market? I think that's what they're trying to do. And from what I am speaking with people, I think if the rate hike is gradual, mm. it won't be a concern. The problem will be if that suddenly they find that inflation's got a little out of control and they need to hike very steeply. I think that will shock the market. But even today, I think what the forward markets are still not looking at rate hikes till sometime in the first, second quarter of next year. Mm. And... Uh, and I think it's still it's very much within the expectations of the market. And there are no signs that inflation is, even the U.S. data is not very in, uh, inflationary. So I think uh, overall there isn't that much concern. And the backdrop is one of global deflation. You know, you still have China and problem. Japan is still trying to lift its economy and so is the U U uh, euro. So I think the global backdrop is still one of deflation. So I don't think they're going to be in a hurry to raise rates. So then in that sense, does liquidity once again you know, become somewhat of a problem because for the last few years now, you know, as, as we, when you look at the QE timeline as well, it's been almost six years of easy money in the system. D do you see liquidity becoming a problem? Because that's really been the key driver for most of these markets. It's not liquidity. It's there's plenty of liquidity. There's $2 trillion lying of excess liquidity, which is just lying back with the Fed. I mean, the theory of economics said that if you print money, then that should result in loan creation and credit creation. Sure. And it's that money supply creation with easy, which the injection of money which should have done, hasn't done to the degree it should have. And so you've got $2 trillion just lying back with the Fed. So if they were to take some of it out, uh, there's no problem. The problem is that very low interest rates are distorting the asset allocation decisions between debt and equity. Exactly. And when you have a, a short end or maybe even the long bond yielding fairly, uh, I mean, 2.5% for the long year bond, and you have equity also with a dividend yield of 2.5%, then people are saying with potential for growth, yeah. people are willing to take that risk. And that's what's been happening. And another thing which is, uh, it often gets commented on is in the U.S. market, there's been a huge amount of buyback of equity. And a lot of that is just financial engineering because your people, companies are borrowing debt and then buying their equity back. There could be managements who are, uh, who are sort of, in, in a sense, conflicted with that because that's what their pay terms require. So there's been this very aggressive buyback and there's a nice piece in The Economist on that as to what issues that might result in because buybacks is a very quick way of trying to boost earnings per share. Yeah. I, I think that brings us back to that question that we were, we were talking to Russell Napier the other day about the, the disconnect between growth and valuation now. Uh, do you think we're seeing worries of bubbles then in terms of even the U.S. market? I'm not talking about the Indian market or the valuation because we do have an aggressive uh, growth projection over the next four years, but especially for the U.S. markets. Right, that's US, even China, look yeah. at Alibaba today. So. <laughs> See, the thing is the valuation, I, I read that this is only the sixth time in 100 years that the valuation in the U.S. market has been at these levels. So, yeah. of course, that would be a concern. But when you look at it relative to where interest rates are, you know, that's the point. And when we had the Japanese market also giving P's of 35 and 40 times earnings, but that was in the context of a zero interest rate uh, uh, alternative. So I think that's really the problem. And I think uh, there are some commentators who've been saying that, well, you know, there was a reason to bring rates down. We had a financial crisis, the worst one in 70 years. Now the U.S. economy at least has stabilized. I mean, it could uh, print to two and a half, three percent growth. And maybe the time for that sort of medicine is out and you got should start withdrawing. And as I said last time, I, if I was the Fed, I would actually look to gradually raise rates so that in case there is a slowdown later, you have something to do. You can put, put them down. Right. Okay, in terms of sentiment back home at the moment, uh, global queues aside, you know, we had buy polls earlier this week and markets got a little bit jittery. Uh, you're already smiling. <laughs> but the Prime Minister has been very strong in his foreign policy. We've had, we had, of course, um, you know, MOU signed with Japan. The Chinese Premier is visiting. A lot of deals that were announced on day one. Today we're going into day two. Uh, you know, how confident are you of uh, a lot of uh, these uh, developments being played out on the ground and soon? 
Well, I'm confident, but uh, uh, do you know it, uh, what's the basis for it? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think that we have, a, as I said, a central banker who I think at the macro level is really doing a terrific job in trying to bring inflation down in the statements he made in the U.S. a couple of weeks ago. So I want to fight inflation only once. And we can see that now in the data. And I hope that next time they publish the expectations of inflation survey, it will show a noticeable dip in the inflation rate. So that you know then even with the dealing of micro issues whether it's bad debt in the banking system deepening the banking system the markets there's a lot of work going on the payment system with these new bank mm -hmm. accounts being opened and i still think on the what's happening in delhi uh, i still think uh, people are being a little too hasty in saying that you know nothing's happened but i still think the prime minister seems to be doing the right things trying to bring uh, develop the capability to deliver something so we're still very hopeful. Uh, but as we again, our thesis was that this translation into economic growth and earnings will take time. And now we're seeing economic data, which is a bit soft. And we said that it would be sometime in 2015 or 16 that really the economy would pick up. And that's when I think inflation comes down. Some of the bottlenecks get opened up. And I think a couple of years ago, uh, in a in couple of years' time, we'll really see uh, things fall into place. And maybe the market is ahead of itself, and mm -hmm. that will be justified. You know, but just to take that point forward, you mentioned that, you know, it's been about hope so far. And, you know, a couple of the market strategists for the last few days have been saying that the markets for now probably have seen the best honeymoon hope rally <laughs> behind them, you know. The, the point here is, you know, Arun, when we talk about this market and the way it's actually been playing out, do you believe it's going to be more about implementation out for the government that probably get keep these markets excited? That's going to be critical to now watch. See, ultimately, it has to translate into earnings growth. You know, that's what investment is all about. Mm. And uh, you know, markets are creatures of sentiment, True. but never uh, sort of uh, dismiss the but the wisdom <laughs> of the crowd. <laughs> and I think you know. Uh, the market was moving up uh, a year ago, yeah. you know, when everyone was so pessimistic, dollar rupee at 68, and, you know, the world was going to come to an end and the market was moving up. And yes, markets do overshoot, so perhaps eight, around 8,000 should cap it for a while. But as I said, it's never in a nice, neat story which you can tell. And uh, I, I think uh, uh, we, we still feel confident that... Uh, and I think what the market is sensing is a... A break from the past. You know, one is, of course, a prime minister who's a doer, but also I think in terms of the thinking market is sensing that we are going to make a break from the way we've run this country for the last 70 years. So do you think perhaps too much emphasis then being put on factors as such as the bipolar results? We've got other state elections coming up as well. Well, that's a worry, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, politically, that's a worry. But even if, if I recall during the main election, a lot of the polls were showing people would say chota election or bada election. So I think people have that distinction in mind. Uh, it would be great for a center to have also the states under control. Uh, in their control, but uh, I don't think that itself is a, it's not a vote against right. Modi, right. it's a local.